Uh, Henry Whitaker, Solicitor General, says, this carefully curated ballot summary misleads in ways that, though sometimes subtle, are likely to influence voters to do so in a way that entrenches the sponsor's monopolistic stranglehold on the marijuana market to the detriment of Floridians. The initiative should be stricken. What in the hell were you just saying? What? What does that mean, Whitaker? What in the world did he just say? Are likely to influence vote. That's the point of a ballot. Entrenches the sponsor's monopolistic uh, stranglehold on the marijuana market to the detriment of Floridians. Well, then look, if you don't want to make it monopolistic, then guess what? Put in policies that create uh, antitrust laws so that it doesn't end up being a monopoly. Make sure that everything stays fair. Here's an idea. If you don't want it to be monopolistic, then why not endorse it, but then pass legislation to make sure that everybody that is in prison or in jail for simple possession of cannabis, that not only did they get their records and sponge, but also give them a grant to go to business school so that they can go to business school and then give them seed money so they can start their business so it can get spread around so you can have more entrepreneurs in the state. How about that? Oh my goodness. Everybody's talking about this one. This one is a popular one. Amendment three. Oh boy. All right. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's take a look. So what is Florida Amendment three? Three. Well, let's take a look. Let's read it. Florida Amendment 3, Marijuana Legalization Initiative. So we're talking about the Florida Amendment 3 for 2024. So here is the language. It says, Florida Amendment 3, the Marijuana Legalization Initiative is on the ballot in Florida as an initiated constitutional amendment on November 5th, 2024. A yes vote supports legalizing marijuana for adults 21 years old and older and allowing individuals to possess up to three ounces of marijuana. A no vote opposes legalizing marijuana for adult use in Florida. So it requires a supermajority, which is 60% majority supermajority vote is required for the approval of the amendment. So here's the overview. It says the initiative would legalize recreational marijuana for adults 20 years of old, uh, old and older. Individuals will also be allowed to possess up to three ounces of marijuana with up to five grams in the form of concentrate. Existing medical marijuana treatment centers would be authorized under the initiative to sell marijuana to adults for personal use. The Florida state legislator could provide by state law for the licensure of entities other than existing medical marijuana treatment centers to cultivate and sell marijuana products. Medical marijuana was adopted by Florida voters in 2016 by a vote of 71% to 29%. So, uh, I'll read this towards the end. So, it says, what is the status of recreational marijuana in the United States? As of November 8th of last year, 24 states in Washington, D.C. had legalized possession and personal use of marijuana for recreational purposes. In 13 states in D.C., the ballot initiative process was used to legalize marijuana. In two states, the legislator referred a measure to the ballot for voter approval. In nine states, bills to legalize marijuana were enacted into law. Florida is one of 10 states that has the initiative process and has not yet legalized marijuana. The other states are Arkansas, Idaho, Oklahoma, Utah, Wyoming, Mississippi, Nebraska, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Oklahoma voters rejected the initiative to legalize marijuana in March 7th of last year. Initiatives were rejected by voters in Arkansas, North Dakota, and South Dakota in 2022. So you have to have a 60% margin, right? Supermajority. 
Uh, so it says this requirement was added to the state constitution uh, in approval of Amendment 3 in 2006. So it says, since then, nine constitutional amendments, including Amendment 2 of 2014, designated to legalize marijuana, have received a majority of votes in favor, but failed to reach 60% threshold where, and were therefore defeated. So we have been trying to legalize it multiple times all in the last 18 years. And we have gotten a majority, but it hasn't reached a super majority yet. So we're always right there when it comes to legalizing it, but we just need that one little bit of oomph in order to get it. And so could 2024 be that year? Well, it could be. Thing is, it's like, we always reach that one little bit, but we always just shy. So, it says the average yes vote was 57.86%, and a no vote was 42.21%, but an average margin of 50, victory of 15.65%. So, that's across uh, the country. So, uh, the initiative's potential uh, here is Flor Florida Democratic Party Chairwoman Nikki Freight says having a ballot measure fundamentally shifts the demographics of who is targeted for turnout and who doesn't. This is going to be a tactic. We're going to run on the issues that the voters care about. So we're basically talking about the turnout. Uh, the turnout is going to be most likely uh, higher for presidential elections. So let's go to the ballot summary. Uh, so the ballot summary says it allows adults 21 years of age or older to possess, purchase, or use marijuana products and marijuana accessories for non-medical personal consumption by smoking, ingestion, or otherwise. Allows the medical marijuana treatment centers and other state licensed entities to acquire, cultivate, process, manufacture, sell, and distribute such products and accessories. Applies to Florida law, does not change or immunize violations of federal law establishes possession limits for to personal use allows con constant legislation i'm sorry allows consistent consistent legislation defines terms provides effective date so adult personal use says the amendment's financial impact primarily comes from expected tax collections As if legal today sales of non-medical marijuana would be subject to sales tax and would remain so if voters approve this amendment. Based on other states' experiences, expected retail sales of non-medical marijuana would generate at least $195.6 million annually in state and local tax revenues once the retail market is fully operational, although the timing of this occurring is unclear. So, Here's the thing. It would also be a huge boom of tax revenue for this state. So let's go to who supports it. So the officials of state senator, John Gruders, uh, corporations from, is Trulieve. Uh, they are a medical marijuana company. Uh, individuals that support it are Howard Bellamy, who is an artist, David Bellamy, who is also an artist, and then John Morgan of Morgan and Morgan for the people, Florida lawyer. So if anybody knows throughout the country, John Morgan is big on uh, marijuana legalization here in Florida. He pushes for it heavily. So with that being said, here are the arguments. So Smart and Safe Florida says the industry is sustainable and growing in 22 I'm sorry, in 2020, when the state lost more than 400,000 jobs, Florida cannabis industry added 15,000 employees. Now, I want to say this. Uh, as far as during the pandemic, a lot of people were home. A lot of people were secluded. And a lot of people were getting into the sauce while they were, some of us and some of our the counties were under lockdown. For Orange County here, we actually went under lockdown. So for people who were dealing with 
you know, the isolation a little bit. Well, they were, you know, they were consuming a little bit more gas. So, of course, some people got the medical marijuana as well in order to help themselves, right? You know, people dealing with depression, anxiety, and things like that. So, of course, the sale of it went up. And this is what the official numbers for medical. We're not talking about how much the plug made. The plugs were banking. They were making some, they were making some dough. They were making some cheddar. They were making some cheese because of the pandemic. Hell, they were delivering like they were DoorDash. They were delivering like they were Uber Eats. You know what I'm saying? And so let's just say, hypothetically, if this were to pass, the plugs will be able to actually become a legitimate business and they'd be able to rank in more money because the stigma is gone, right? Just saying. All right, let's continue. It says tax revenues from the legal cannabis industry for floor, for federal and state governments are projected to reach $4.06 billion in 2025, according to New Frontier data. There's no evidence that legalizing marijuana for medical or recreational use at the state level, as 37 states already have done, has boosted underage consumption from the regulated marketplace. The, content, the, the continued black market sale of marijuana perpetuates a culture of criminality. If adult use cannabis is legalized, Florida users will have accountability, transparency, and regulations in place to ensure products are not laced with or contain potentially deadly chemicals. This is another thing. If it is illegal, then guess what? You'll have people who will lace it in order to stretch it out so that they can make more money essentially right but when they use that to stretch it out then guess what you're going to be getting potentially harmful things in it which can harm the people who consume it you're never going to stop the consumption never ever 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 but you can make the consumption more safe but it requires legalization and with that legalization means that people are going to have to be regulated these companies will have to be regulated. The plugs will have to be regulated. And the quality of it. And if the quality of it is for safe for consumption, then less people to get sick. See? I think we have a, I think in the law, we have a particular strain that's legal. I think it's called, I think it's Delta 8 or 9. But there's actually strains that are legal here already. You might as well legalize it all. But that's the thing. You want to make sure consumption is safe. Uh, Kim Rivers from Truly, Truly says it's all about improving access. We came into this mission with providing access to high quality products that are safe and have an appropriate value proposition to give folks the control over an original day's medical journey. I don't think that changes here. In effect, we are at our core about expanding opportunity for access to the safe legal product, which is what this would allow us to continue to do. The Bellamy Brothers, uh, they say, uh, they say they see the benefits of adult use in Florida as we love the Freedom State moniker and believe Florida needs to join the millions of Americans whose adults are free to use cannabis without fear of being incarcerated. Yes. John Morgan of Morgan and Morgan says, I'm putting my name and my heart into passing Amendment 3. I believe now is the time to treat marijuana as the same as we treat beer, wine, and spirits. Passing Amendment 3 will create tens of thousands of new jobs, generate hundreds of millions for our state each year, and save PAC taxpayers money by not having to pay to prosecute simple crimes for possession. He says, I encourage Florida voters to join me in standing up for freedom, for common sense laws, and for the people and for Amendment 3. Of course, you know, John Morgan says he's for the people. John Gruder says supporting Amendment 3 is common sense decision that prioritizes the individual freedom, health, and safety of economic growth by 
legalizing recreational marijuana for adults. We can give Floridians access to safe products, generate significant re revenue for critical public services and create new job opportunities for Floridians. Now, that is the people who are for Amendment 3 that want to vote yes. Here's the opposition. So here are the opponents. Senator Rick Scott, Senator uh, Representative Matt Gates, Representative, uh, sorry, Governor Ron DeSantis, and Attorney General Ashley Moody. Now, here's the funny part. Marco Rubio is not on that list. I repeat, Marco Rubio is not on that list. Interesting, right? Remember when we talked about insurance companies? Who makes a lot of money off of insurance companies? Well, people like Rick Scott, people like Ron DeSantis, right? And so they make money off the insurance premiums. Well, no, that, no doubt they also make money off of Big Pharma. So, of course, they will be against the legalization of cannabis because if that was the case, then most people, a lot of people who depend on certain medications in order to be able to uh, keep themselves regulated or to treat certain ailments, they'd be able to get it freely, which would be a whole lot cheaper instead of actually getting medications, which means that the big pharma companies would actually make less and they don't want that. So, of course, they're going to get money to people like Ron DeSantis and Rick Scott, right? So, of course, they would be against uh, legalizing this. The Republican Party is against this as well. Corporations are My Florida Green, organizations like a Drug Free America Foundation, Florida Chamber of Commerce, and Simple Approaches to Marijuana are also against this. Here's the arguments from Matt Gates says, regardless of how someone feels about abortion and marijuana, I don't believe that those issues should be resolved in the state constitution. Hang on. Whatever happened to, let's leave it up to the states. I thought that's what we're doing. Hold up. So it's leave it up to the states until it's leaving it up into the states. Matt, you're contradicting yourself. <clears throat> Does eyebrows know exactly what he wants? Goodness gracious. So, Nick Rule, uh of medical marijuana dispensary, my Florida Green says the medical patient doesn't belong in the same arena as the recreational. Although recreational will use it for medical purposes, but it does get a little convoluted and confusing. And that's the whole reason we want to keep it as separate as possible. It's, oh my gosh, she said, it is not fair for a recreational bill or movement to step on the heads of people who are sick, who are debilitated, who are funding these dispensaries. These dispensaries are taking that money to foot the bill to create a recreational movement to create a profit. I thought you guys were for these companies making profits. First of all, second of all, if it is cheaper for somebody, instead of getting it through a medical marijuana dispensary to just get it from somebody, you know, that can give it to you cheaper, the same thing, then isn't that more fiscally responsible for, citizens isn't that better for them so they're not spending as much money i thought, I thought you guys were for people saving money in this state i mean if you're if you're spending less money giving it to a plug than you are giving it to a dispensary then why not why aren't you why are you limiting the options of voters See, this is what happens when you have politicians that are in the hands of corporations. See, when it actually comes time for you to actually be able to really save money, 
and actually have real options, they don't care. Uh, Henry Whitaker, Solicitor General, says, this carefully curated ballot summary misleads in ways that, though sometimes subtle, are likely to influence voters to do so in a way that entrenches the sponsor's monopolistic stranglehold on the marijuana market to the detriment of Floridians. The initiative should be stricken. What in the hell were you just saying? What? What does that mean, Whitaker? What in the world did he just say? Are likely to influence vote. That's the point of a ballot. Entrenches the sponsors' monopolistic uh, stranglehold on the marijuana market to, to the detriment of Floridians. Well, then look, if you don't want to make it monopolistic, then guess what? Put in policies that create uh, antitrust laws so that it doesn't end up being a monopoly. Make sure that everything stays fair. Here's an idea. If you don't want it to be monopolistic, then why not endorse it, but then pass legislation to make sure that everybody that is in prison or in jail for simple possession of cannabis, that not only did they get their records in sponge, but also give them a grant to go to business school so that they can go to business school and then give them seed money so they can start their business so it can get spread around so you can have more entrepreneurs in the state. How about that? But you don't want to do that, do you? Because you don't want the Negroes to get jobs. You don't want the Negroes to own their own businesses, do you? Because that's who primarily was affected for marijuana possession in the state of Florida. Ooh, I got some ideas, but y'all don't want to listen. Short King, Governor Ron DeSantis, well, more like short court jester, he said these initiatives are very, very extreme. Are they? How many states have legalized it? He says, once voters figure out how radical both of those are, they're going to fail. It's basically a license to have it anywhere you want. So no time, place, and manner restrictions. The state will start to smell like marijuana in our cities and towns. Are you kidding me right now? His objection to it is the smell? How many people got alcohol in their house? Are you calling for the banning of alcohol throughout the state, even though alcohol is actually more dangerous? Are we saying that the state smells like alcohol? You know, one of the benefits of being an independent media is that I also flex my muscles, you know, when it comes to the First Amendment. And I will have to say this. Ron DeSantis is an idiot. Ron DeSantis is a fool, and he thinks you're a fool by saying, oh, well, the entire state's going to smell like marijuana. He thinks you're stupid. You're not. Uh, vote no on three. Spokeswoman says Amendment 3 will have a disastrous downstream consequence that will turn our state into an East Coast version of California. It will threaten the health and safety of every community in Florida by allowing drug dealers to run rampant with zero consequences. I'm sorry, um, Miss Sarah Bascom, you're talking about drug dealers running rampant in Florida? You mean like the Sackler family? The ones who owned Oxycontin that ran roughshod and caused the opioid crisis? You mean those type of drug dealers that you no doubt get money from when it comes to big pharma? Is that what you're talking about? Those are the drug dealers that I actually want to go after. 
I don't want to go after the drug dealers like Eli Lilly. I want to go after the ones like Gilead, GlaxoSmithKline. I want to go after Pfizer. I want to go after Johnson & Johnson. Those are the drug dealers that I want to bring to heal. What about you? Oh, my goodness. And then the peace that is his thoughts. Fire Marshal Bill himself, Rick Scott, says, I know that marijuana is a gateway drug. First of all, you know what? Let's finish it because I got some things to say. Says, my brother just died in the last few months. Starting with marijuana, he ended up struggling with alcohol and drugs, so I don't support it. Rick, I got to tell you something. You think it's a gateway drug, but the real gateway drug is actually trauma. What did your brother go through in order for him to start experimenting with a mind-altering substance, which everybody does? Hell, caffeine is a mind-altering substance. Alcohol is a mind-altering substance. So with that being the case, people like your brother who passed away who was abusing it, well, why was he self-medicating? Was it because of the marijuana or was it actually because of trauma that has he has endured in his life? Because you only self-medicate when something feels wrong. So this is Rick Scott pushing the old, oh, it's a gateway drug myth. It's not a myth. It is a falsehood. It's more than a myth. But somebody like Rick Scott wants you to believe that it's not. This is the same guy that made you know, millions upon millions of dollars off of the backs of sick people in Florida with Medicare fraud and all that, allegedly. So how would I be voting? I will be voting yes on Amendment 3. So uh, I encourage people to vote yes on Amendment 3 because that really is uh, our, we're exercising our fundamental right as, you know, basically your body, your choice, right? If you do not agree with the consumption of marijuana, don't consume it. Just like if you don't agree with the consumption of alcohol, don't consume it. Easy as that. The availability of you being able to consume it does not mean that you are necessarily for it. You're just okay with people having the freedom to do it, just even though you don't do it. Like, for instance, Savvy, Savvy Sab, she doesn't consume cannabis, but she agrees with it being legalized because. It's about freedom of choice, and it does not harm people. So therefore, it's just like, for instance, I don't like pineapple on pizza, right? Go ahead, come after me in the chat. I don't like pineapple on pizza, but I am okay with people having the right to put pineapple on their pizza because that's their choice. I just won't have pineapple on my pizza. I know, I know, you know, but the state's going to smell like it. Vote yes on three. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash JV Font. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.